What's up, YouTube? This is Mathis97, and welcome to my WWE 2K14 15 Universe Mode. This is episode number 9, and we're here with Main Event! So here we go. We have a tag team matchup to finally uh, put an end to this Bella Funkadactyl saga, as those two teams are going to square off. The Miz 101 with Kofi Kingston, Jack Swagger up against Alberto Del Rio's tag team partner, Curtis Axel. Our fourth matchup on the card is going to be Xavier Woods of the New Day taking on Justin Gabriel. So Xavier Woods looking for a bit of redemption for his team. And what about this? Gold Dust one-on-one -on -one with Eric Rowan. Cody Rhodes will be in Gold Dust's corner. Bray Wyatt in Eric Rowan's corner. So here we go. Kobe Kingston picks up the victory over The Miz. And Curtis Axel knocks off the United States champion Jack Swagger. Quite the impressive... Quite the impressive win there for Axel, and Justin Gabriel defeats Xavier Woods. So that's yet another victory for the team of Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel. They've been rolling as of late. They've they're just on a on a winning streak right now. But let's move into the Divas division here, as we've got the Funkadactyls, Cameron and Naomi, and they're getting ready to take on the Bella Twins, Nikki and Bree. And so far, in this little uh, series that they've got going, we take you back where Nikki Bella was, um, excuse me, Nikki Bella faced off against, uh, I believe it was Cameron in a matchup. No, I, I'm, I'm getting this wrong. I'm completely forgetting. It was Naomi one-on-one -on -one with Nikki Bella, which Naomi won that matchup. Brie Bella defeated Cameron. Brie Bella then defeated Naomi, but Cameron defeated Nikki Bella, if my memory serves me correctly. So, the series is even right now, and this tag team matchup is set to put an end to the score, set to be the tiebreaker, as it's the Bella Twins taking on the Funkadactyls in tag team action here tonight to kick off main event. And I know I've said in the past how the Divas Division... You know, I was going to put more focus on it, and I think I did an okay job in WWE 2K14. I mean, I think I've always put a bit more emphasis on the Divas division than other uh, than other YouTubers out there. But uh, this year, I'm hoping that I can actually live up to that once Paige and Emma and anyone else who's DLC for the Divas division come out. Because that, you know, it's just more talent. This year's division is... You know, I guess every year it's always kind of small, but this this year there's really Thank slim pickings. I mean, we've got, we have, I think, seven Divas right Jerry now, but, I mean, we're missing the likes of Alicia Fox, and, I mean, especially with the fact that you can't create Divas, that's really a hindrance on the series. I mean, last year I know I even had to bring in Lita, but I, I don't even have that kind of an option this year because there aren't any, like, legends or anything like that for the Divas. It's just just the ones we've got here and then Paige and Emma when they come out on DLC I know Paige should be out fairly shortly I believe is it the 16th I think or maybe it's the 15th that they come out on DLC it's Sting, Hogan, Paige and the WCW pack which I'm not getting because it doesn't come with a season pass I don't really want to spend the money for something I don't need so uh, but as for that I pre-ordered the game but long story short things fell through with my local game store, they wound up getting an Xbox One Nikki copy Bella instead of a PlayStation 4 copy. Uh, I don't even really need to go into much more details than that. I, I just wound up getting the digital version instead. So I didn't get the pre-order bonus, so hopefully I could maybe pick up Hogan and Sting. And maybe, just maybe, they could be seen in future episodes of the Universe Mode. I don't know. I mean, we've seen... We know that Hogan got pretty pretty badly damaged by the shield in that tag team match of the Survivor Series. But imagine if Hulk Hogan came back to, like, manage somebody. That'd be pretty cool. But I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see how that goes. I'm not sure how much each individual, you know, uh, purchase, how much it's going to be or whatever. Whether I'm actually going to want to spend the money or not. But we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, Paige is definitely going to be an asset to this series. Somebody I'm going to want to get... Uh, I did get the season pass, so finally we figured out when Paige is going to be released for the people who got the season pass, so it's about time. But anyway, let's focus in on the Divas at hand. So obviously, you know, Tamina Snuka yet to debut, although she will be debuting in a few weeks, probably around the same time as Paige, actually. So, 
You know, the four divas in the ring, as well as the champ, Summer Rae, AJ, Natalya, and have I really already named all the divas in the game already? I think so. I think that's basically it. So, basically, long story short, those divas are going to have to be prepared because we've got some new, new blood, new life coming into this division. But speaking of new blood, Naomi and Cameron, they've been kind of impressive since they've made their debut here in 2K15. I mean, of course, Cameron picking up a victory over Nikki Bella and Naomi getting a victory over Nikki Bella as well. So, I mean, so far, Brie Bella's undefeated this season, but Nikki Bella, she's yet to win a match. So, just kind of showing how the tables have, uh, well, not really how the tables have turned, but how, the, how this whole little uh, saga has been going on. Both the Funk and Dactyls have picked up a victory and a loss. But here we go now. Nikki Bella and Naomi in the ring. Two who I would have thought would have been the stronger two of their respective teams. But apparently, from what we've seen, Brie Bella's been the stronger of the two Bellas so far this year in universe mode. Well, not even year, this season. I just like to call them seasons because, I mean, it really, we haven't even gone through a full year in Universe Mode yet. It's only the Royal Rumble. I mean, this Universe Mode has been a bit slower paced than it probably could have been, but there's not really much I can do about that. Yeah, but for now, our main focus is the Royal Rumble. That is only a few episodes away. Episode 14, I think, is the Royal Rumble, or maybe it's 15. No, it's 14. Episode 14. And speaking of episode 15, when that episode comes around, it's going to be the 200th total episode of Universe Mode on this channel. Counting together, calculating, adding, and multiplying, and all the mathematical equations that go into it. I've figured out that episode 15 is going to be the 200th episode total of Universe Mode, as I had 114 counting episode 0 for WA13, and then I had 71 episodes last year with 2k 14 so this year if I can hit 15 episodes that will be the 200th total episode of universe mode here on the channel so that's a big landmark for the channel for the series really looking forward to it and I mean the night after Royal Rumble right in the midst right in the heat of the road to WrestleMania that's just gonna be that's gonna be huge that's gonna be a big episode but here we go now Nikki Bella Naomi in the ring atomic drop there from Nikki Bella and follows up with a leg drop to Naomi, taking her down. And right now, Naomi, oh, counter from Naomi as she takes, uh, well, she delivers a knee right to the gut of Nikki Bella. Cameron now makes the tag. She's into the ring. Here we go. Nikki Bella, though, getting getting Cameron in, into the Bella's corner. And, oh, went for the forearm, but Cameron sidestepped. And, oh, what a kick to the face there of Nikki Bella, taking her down. Could she be out of it here? Cameron, she's got to capitalize right now because the Bellas, look at this, Hurricanrana there from Nikki Bella. And it looks like the Bella Twins have, you know, they're stepping up their in-ring techniques. They're getting a little bit better day by day in the ring, developing a, a, a better wrestling ability. And right here, Naomi glitches out. And this matchup, this was the tag team matchup I was referring to a few episodes ago that, that took an eternity. This one went for, like, 25 30 minutes it was ridiculous so right there Naomi glitching up so it looks like Cameron's gonna be on her own for this one nothing really I can do so I mean obviously this game still has some bugs in it but no wrestling game can be perfect wrestling isn't perfect so you know what, what can you do cover here from Nikki Bella one two kick out from Cameron now as Cameron she's got to fight this battle on her own now as Naomi has been taken out of commission here and the Bellas, they've got a huge advantage right now. It's two on one. And there's a nice leg sweep. But Nikki Bella looks like she may have hurt her hurt her leg there on that leg sweep. But both Divas trying to make it back to their feet. I mean, Nikki, she missed her opportunity to capitalize because she no, did some damage to her, but her leg. Her knee looked like off that maneuver. And off a nice reverse DDT. Counter from Cameron. And here goes Cameron. Hurricanrana. Nice move there, taking down Nikki Bella. Cover on Nikki. One, two. Oh, but Brie Bella. Brie Bella's right in there to break it up. And it's a good thing this this time around in, in the game, the Bellas have different attires, so I can at least tell them apart. Unlike last year in previous games where you couldn't tell the Bellas apart, really, this year it's going to be a bit easier to do that. And the same goes with the Usos, as long as I can make sure I get the face paints right. 
which one has it on which side of their face. But Nikki Iris Whip sending Cameron into the corner. And right now, I suppose it doesn't really matter what corner that Cameron is in. I mean, preferably the Bellows would want to keep him in her corner, or keep the, keep keep her in their corner, I should say, to try to make frequent tags. But look at that. I believe a, a rolling elbow there from Nikki Bella took out Cameron just like that. Just like that, the match is over. You blink and you would have missed it. But here we go now. It's time to move on into the main event of main event as this one is between Gold Dust and Eric Rowan. And if we remember, it was the Rhodes Brothers taking on the Wyatt family on the last episode of Main Event. And during that matchup, Gold Dust and Luke Harper were ejected from the matchup. Referee making a very controversial call, ejecting both men from the match which made it just a one-on-one -on -one matchup between Cody Rhodes and Eric Rowan. And unfortunately for Cody Rhodes, the odds were just stacked against him. Not only did he have to contend with Eric Rowan, but Bray Wyatt also at ringside. In the end, just tipped the scales in the Wyatt family's favor. And because of that, the Wyatt family was victorious. Eric Rowan getting the win over Cody Rhodes. And here tonight, Gold Dust looks to take a crack at Eric Rowan in this matchup. Eric Rowan, of course, won half of the Tag Team Champions. They defeated Tons of Funk way back when at the No Way Out pay-per-view on the pre-show. They defeated Tons of Funk, or as they, as they were later known as the main event players. Here tonight, Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes. I mean, Gold Dust, of course, made his return following the Survivor Series pay-per-view and kind of tried to help give Cody Rhodes a bit of a morale boost heading into his matchup with the Big Show. Unfortunately, Cody Rhodes Can lost that matchup. Dust. Big Show, of course, as we the know, number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship, going to be facing Ryback for the title the at the, the Royal Rumble. Rumble. But Cody Rhodes is still a top contender, Eric potentially, Rowe in that Intercontinental Rowe. Championship division. If he can just keep picking up some victories, he could potentially be the next challenger, no matter who wins the championship at the Royal Rumble. But it seems like as though Cody... Oh, what a slap from Gold Dust! Hear that one echo throughout the arena. And look at this, Vintage Gold Dust. Oh, nice chop right to the throat there. Vintage Gold Dust right there is, you know, now that Gold Dust is back, now that he's made his return, it appears as though Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust have been, you know, they've aligned themselves together. They're maybe trying to take a crack at the tag team division. But so far, it hasn't been a very successful trip for Gold oh Dust and Cody Rhodes as the Rhodes brothers, the brotherhood, have been unsuccessful in their past two attempts against the White Wolf. Not past two attempts, their past attempt. But, I don't know, it could be the past two attempts if Gold Dust fails to get the winner for Eric Rowan here tonight. But this is, a, I think that, I mean, of course, the Wyatt family, they're heading into their tag team title defense against the primetime players. They need... I mean, victories are always good, no matter which side of this, which side of the coin you're on. If you're somebody, if you're the champ, like Eric Rowan is right now, and Luke Harper as well. If you're the Wyatt family, you you need to keep your momentum strong. You need to have impressive performances. You need to look strong and pick up big victories. Otherwise, there's no way you're going to be able to last against your competition. But if you're on the other side of the coin, if you're Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust, you're trying to make a name for yourself in the tag team division. And every victory is key, especially at this point when you don't really have anything that makes you uh, that makes you a stable element here on the SmackDown brand. I mean, right now, of course, the Wyatt family, they're definitely... I mean, you can you can bet that they'll be featured on the card because they've got those tag team titles. However, Gold, Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes don't have tag team titles. They don't have anything that really makes them a staple on Friday Night SmackDown, which is why these victories are so crucial. But Gold Dust now, beautiful counter, makes it back to his feet. And Eric Rowan now... Oh, what a splash in the corner there. Eric Rowan's got the advantage right now. He's in control of this matchup. So far, Bray Wyatt, Cody Rhodes staying out of it right now. Haven't gotten involved in this matchup as of yet, but that could very easily change as we've seen in the past. 
Eric Rowan now is just kind of stalking Goldust, but Goldust back to his feet. The bizarre one manages to make a counter there. And, oh, some beautiful strikes, but Eric Rowan now with a big powerhouse shot to the face of Goldust. But Goldust, Goldust firing back with a counter, and once again drops to the ground and delivers an uppercut there. A strike right to the throat. And now look at this, stomp right to the guts, right to the ribs of Eric Rowan. Goldust now begins to take control on this one. He's starting to fight back, build some momentum for himself. Nice suplex there from Goldust, taking Eric Rowan down. But Rowan back to his feet here. Irish whips Goldust over there into the turnbuckle, but Goldust with a counter. And now Goldust has got him, he's dropped him down there. Oh, he picks him back up out of the corner, but now Rowan counters and tosses Goldust into the opposite corner and delivers a nice knee right to the gut of Gold. And look at this, Rowan going up to the second rope here, maybe going for a splash, and oh, he managed to partially connect, Hit, but that's enough. I mean, just look at the size of Eric Rowan. Even a glancing blow will do a lot of damage from Rowan as he hits the splash from the second rope, but Goldust with a counter right now. Counter from Rowan. But Goldust now, short arm clothesline. Try to take Eric, just about took Eric Rowan's head off there on that one. And Goldust now could be going for something big, going for a DDT. Rowan though with a counter as he takes Goldust down. And Eric Rowan now, just measuring Goldust right now, almost toying with him. DDT now to Goldust, taking him out. And Eric Rowan now building up a full head of steam and splash right there to Goldust. Two counts. Oh, my Goldust just manages to get the shoulder up before a count of three. And Eric Rowan now. I think he's looking to put this one. Oh, a counter. Counter from Goldust. Eric Rowan is looking to put this match away. And now Goldust maybe going for the final cut here. But counter into a suplex from Eric Rowan. And Rowan now. Counter again from Goldust. Counter from Goldust again, and oh, big clothesline taking Eric Rowan down. He's setting up Eric Rowan now. Goldust measuring his man. Could be looking for the final cut once again. Here we go. He's get nope, Rowan blocks it. Eric Rowan now suplex once again, taking Goldust down. But Goldust back up to his feet. And big boot from Eric Rowan. Darn near took Goldust's head off there. I don't think Goldust's going to be able to come back from that. Eric Rowan, he's looking to finish this one off for good. Look at this. Oh, what a move. A Uranagi side slam taking Goldust down and possibly out. I mean, off that big boot, Goldust is just completely out of it right now. Eric Rowan hooks the leg. One, two, three, and this match is over. Eric Rowan gets a decisive victory over Goldust there. I mean, man, that big boot just nearly, nearly decapitated Goldust. Uh, wow, just the power, the force behind that big boot. Goldust never even saw it coming. As we see, not once but twice, Eric Rowan managed to counter the final cut. And then off the big boot, that big maneuver. And Goldust, that was lights out for the bizarre one. And Eric Rowan, yet another momentum booster. A big victory there for the Wyatt family heading into their tag team title defense against the primetime players. Eric Rowan can sell it, but wait a minute. Wait a minute, is that the, the Usos music is now playing. Eric Rowan, he's ready for a confrontation. And Eric Rowan, wait, wait a minute, from behind, from behind. One of the Usos, I believe that's Jay Uso just attacked, just attacked Eric Rowan. What a statement this is made by the Usos. As you know, they're making their return to universe mode. We haven't seen them since WA 13. And one of the Usos trying to make a decisive, ret or not decisive, but a shocking return and make a big statement out of it as they just attacked Eric Rowan going right after the tag team champions, wasting little time. That is a big statement there from the Usos. Maybe, just maybe, they could be future contenders for those tag team titles. I'm not sure, but until the until the next episode, I want to thank you all for watching, and as always, keep on YouTubing.